Let's say you have a patient who is presenting with epigastric pain, nausea, and vomiting after a night out binge drinking. He's got bluish gray discoloration around his belly button and flanks, and also has elevated amylase as well as lipase levels. What do you think is going on? So clearly this patient has acute pancreatitis. The question is, what do we want to do for this patient? The interesting thing about acute pancreatitis is that for about 80% of the cases, simple bowel rest, IV fluids, as well as pain medications is all you need, and a patient is better in about a week. But for about 20% of cases, patients can develop severe pancreatitis, which has a dramatically increased morbidity and mortality. Those patients with severe pancreatitis often develop SEERS, or the Systemic Inflammatory Response Syndrome, or pseudocysts, or abscesses. The big question for pancreatitis is, can we predict who those patients are and in doing so improve their outcomes? The answer is somewhat. We have a bunch of different models to predict severity of acute pancreatitis, all of them somewhat useful, but not consistently accurate. The main complaint against all these models is that they have a general low specificity, meaning a high false positive rate. Now, there are a ton of different models out there, and some of the more well-known ones include Ransom's criteria, the Apache 2 score, the Sears score, the BICEP score, the Harmless Acute Pancreatitis score, or HAP score, the Organ Failure Based scores, and the CT Severity Index. The structure for all of these is that they can either be done at emissions, 48 hours after emissions, or after some type of imaging. The problem with most of them is that not only do they have high false positive rates, but are also cumbersome to use, and so aren't really used often clinically. The three that I will focus on are the Ransom's criteria, Apache 2 score, and the Sears score. Let's first start with Ransom's criteria. What this score tries to do is to look at a set of 11 variables. Five during the patient's admission, and another six 48 hours later. The five parameters to look at at emissions include age greater than 55, a WBC count greater than 16, a glucose level greater than 200, an AST level greater than 250, and an LDH level greater than 350. The six parameters to look at 48 hours after emissions include a hematocrit drop of greater than 10% from emissions, a BUN increase greater than 5 than from emissions, a base deficit greater than 4, which basically means that your normal bicarb level, or 24, minus the patient's current bicarb is greater than 4. A calcium level under 8, a PaO2 level under 60, and fluid buildup of greater than 6 liters, probably best measured by weight. What you want to do now is count the number of variables that are met, and this is equal to your score. A score greater or equal to 3 means that you probably have severe pancreatitis and a score under three means that severe pancreatitis is unlikely. There are also mortality estimates based on a patient's score, which I'll list for you here. So on the low side, a score between zero and two is associated with a 2% mortality, and a score between seven and eight has an 100% mortality associated with it, and then everything else is in between. As you can see, the Ransom's criteria is a little bit cumbersome to use, especially because you have to wait 48 hours. How good of a tool it is has also been called into question, but it's probably important to know it because it's the first one created and the one you'll likely hear about first. And it's actually not that cumbersome compared to some of the other ones out there. The second one we'll cover is the Apache 2 score. Instead of 11 variables with the Ransom score, the Apache 2 score has 12 variables. The 12 variables are temperature, mean arterial pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate, oxygenation, pH, sodium, K, creatinine, hematocrit, WBC count, and a Glasgow coma scale. For each of these 12 variables, you pretty much get a score between 0 and 4 that is dependent on certain defined metrics. Add up all the scores for all the variables, and you get your total. A total score less than 8 has an estimated mortality of less than 4%, while a score above 8 has an estimated mortality between 11 and 
So total score under 8 is probably not severe pancreatitis, while a score above 8 might be severe pancreatitis. I'm just going to quickly show you what this looks like. And as you can see here, here are the 12 variables, and how to score the 12 variables from a score of 0 to 4. Take note that the score for the Glasgow Coma score is a little bit different. While this criteria has the most evidence behind it, you can see that it is extremely cumbersome to do, and so isn't used very often. Unlike the Ransons criteria, which takes 48 hours to complete, you can use the Apache 2 right away, and can actually trend the values to determine if your patient is getting better or worse, which is nice. Now, on to the next one. The majority of the mortality associated with acute pancreatitis comes from the development of SEERS. So a bunch of people thought, if that's the case, can we just use the criteria for diagnosis of SEERS as a predictive model for severe pancreatitis? It turns out that you can. The criteria for having SEERS is having two or more of the following. A temperature greater than 38.5 or less than 35.0, a heart rate greater than 90, a respiratory rate greater than 20, a PaCO2 under 32, or a WBC count over 12,000 or under 4,000. So if your patient has two or more of these conditions, they're defined to have SEERS on top of acute pancreatitis, and so that would place them in a severe pancreatitis group that's expected to have higher morbidity and mortality. Those with persistent SEERS or SEERS for 48 hours or more are at the highest risk of mortality, about 25%. Those with SEERS for less than 48 hours have a mortality of about 8%. And those patients who do not meet SEERS criteria have a mortality of 0% in one study. The nice thing about this criteria is that it's very simple, quick, and can be done right away when you see the patient, and is about as good as the other criteria as well. Now, here are our take-home points for this video, along with all of our sources. Hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.